This video is going to cover how to do interval inversions. And so what we're looking at here, I've laid out a number of intervals and all of these are based on the C major scale. Um, and this doesn't really matter, this is just sort of how I chose to do this. So here we have C to C, C to D, C to E, C to F, C to G, C to A, and so on. And so what you're doing in an interval inversion, let's start with C to D because this one is a little bit more straightforward. Um, the first step is to look at the two notes that you have and to figure out what that interval is itself. So C to D, C, D, or 1, 2. We know that this is some sort of second. If we count on our piano, the half steps, C, C sharp, D. So 1, 2 half steps. So an interval of a second vertically with two half steps would give us a major second. So that's the first step in getting an interval inversion. Now, the cool part about interval inversions is aside from this, we don't need to know much about the intervals themselves. So from here, what we do is we take the bottom note, and the bottom note moves up an octave. So the C is going to come up an octave. And the top note, or the D, is just going to come straight across. So again, the bottom note goes up an octave, and the bottom note just goes straight across where it is. So instead of having a C going up to a D, now we have a D going up to a C. And so if we look at this new interval, D going up to C, it's like a flipped version of this interval over here. So what we need to do is let's find out the second interval. So D going to C, so D is 1, E is 2, F is 3, G is 4, A is 5, B is 6, C is 7. So this is some sort of seventh. If we count the intervals on the keyboard, we would end up with starting on D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ten half steps. So vertically, generic interval of a seventh with ten half steps is going to give us a minor seventh. Now we're going to do a few more of these and then we're going to discover some of the rules about how interval inversions work. So this is a completed interval inversion. Minor second, or a major second, excuse me inverts to a minor seventh. One of the rules we'll see is that major intervals invert to minor and that seconds, or generic intervals of a second, invert to a seventh. So we'll keep this in mind. Let's go down to the next example. We'll go back and do that one with C in just a second. So C to E, so C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, so some sort of third. If we count the half steps, C to E, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 half steps. Generic interval of a third with 4 half steps mean this is a, means this is a major third. So to do the interval inversion, the bottom note goes up an octave, so the C comes up, the upper note goes across. Now if we Calculate the interval from E to C. E is 1, F is 2, G is 3, A is 4, B is 5, C is 6. If we count the half steps from E to C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 half steps. This would give us a minor sixth. So again, we can see that a major interval converts to a minor interval and that three, or thirds, invert to sixths. We'll start to see these patterns really forming pretty soon. Let's look at the next one. C to F, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four, so some sort of fourth. 
C to F half steps. One, two, three, four, five. Five half steps on the chart that would give us a perfect fourth. So if we invert the interval, the bottom one comes up an octave, top one comes over. So now F to C, F, G, A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, some sort of fifth. If we count the half steps from F to C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven half steps which gives us a perfect fifth. Aha! So we have a couple new pieces of information. Perfect inverts to perfect. Fourth, fourths invert to fifths. Okay, we're gonna keep the learning rolling. Let's go to the next ones. So C to G, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five, some sort of fifth. We count the half steps from C to G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven half steps. We just had one of those up here in this example. So interval of a fifth with seven half steps. It's a perfect fifth. So the bottom note is going to go up an octave. The top one just comes straight across. Now, if we can guess based on the rules, we know that a perfect interval should invert to a perfect. And we know that a fourth, let me pull this one back down. So here, a perfect interval inverted to a perfect interval. And a fourth inverted to a fifth. Now, inversions work backwards and forwards. So if a fourth goes to a fifth, then a fifth goes to a fourth. So my guess is that when we calculate this new interval down here, perfect, this perfect fifth, is going to invert to a perfect fourth. Let's see. So G to C, G, A, B, C. So some sort of fourth. If we count the half steps on the keyboard, one, two, three, four, five half steps. Uh-oh, five half steps and a fourth makes it look like it's a perfect fourth. So perfect intervals invert to perfects, fourths invert to fifths, fifths invert to fourths, and so on. We're going to start seeing a lot more of this as we do more. Let's go to the next one. So C to A, C, D, E, F, G, A, so some sort of sixth. If we count from C to A in half steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine half steps. So an interval of a sixth, generic interval, with nine half steps, where those meet, that would give us a major sixth. So let's look over here. Like I said, remember, this third, major third, became, when we flipped it, a minor six. So major went to minor, three went to six. Now remember I said that they go both ways. So six would go to three, and minor would go to major. So over here, Let's make a guess. I'll write it in a different pencil so we know that it's a guess. I'm guessing that this major interval is going to become minor. And I bet you that this 6 is going to invert to a 3. I'll fill that in in red, if we're correct. So let's do the inversion. So C goes up an octave. A just slides right across. So now we have A to C. A, B, C. One, two, three. Some sort of third. If we count the half steps from A to C on the piano, one, two, three. This would be three half steps. And a generic interval of a third with three half steps does indeed give us a minor third. So now we know that minor our major intervals invert to minor, minor interval invert to major, sixths go to thirds, thirds go to sixths. We know that perfects stay perfect, fourths go to fifths, and fifths go to fourths. We're getting a lot of facts here. A lot of facts are on the table. Let's do the next one. So C to B, 
C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So seven. If we count that out on the keyboard in half steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven half steps, which gives us a major seventh. Now, I wish there was a way to do this where we could see all of them. Let's look back up here at the first one we did. So we know that majors invert to minors, but in this first one we did, we learned that seconds invert to sevenths. So I'm going to predict, if we scroll back down here, we know that majors invert to minor. So I'm going to predict, and I'll do this in lighter pencil, I bet that this major is going to become a minor, and I bet you that this seventh is going to become a second. So we're going to do the inversion. So C moves up, and B moves over, and those are pretty close, but the B is the lower note. So B to C, B, C, one, two, gives us a second. And then the number of half steps between B and C is one half step. So an interval of a second with one half step does give us a minor second. So again, majors and minors invert to each other, and seventh and seconds invert to each other. Two more here. C up to C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The big octave, so C to C. If we count it out on the keyboard, it's going to be 12 half steps, which means this is a perfect eight. So if we do the inversion, this one kind of looks silly because there's just this one comes up an octave and that's C and then that one C just moves over. So C to C, C to C if we count out the interval, one because C to C is one. And then there are zero half steps because we're going from a C to the same note so we haven't counted, there's no jumps to count. So this ends up being a perfect one or a unison. So sometimes we call perfect eight octave, sometimes we call this perfect one a unison. And so perfect intervals invert to perfect. Eighths or octaves invert to firsts. So now we can go back and do the very first one, which would have been a little confusing if we did it first. So C to C, we know that this is an interval of a one, zero half steps, so it's a perfect one. So you just kind of pick one because it's the same note and moving up an octave and the other one stays where it is. Then we know that C to C is going to be an 8. There's 12 half steps and it's going to be a perfect 8. So now let's take a little bit of time and let's review our findings about how the numbers and the qualities work in interval inversions for the C major scale.